Subscribe now and click on the bell icon to never miss learning from Vedanti. Let us begin. So, talking about the structure of atom. Now, long, long back, people actually didn't know what atoms are. So, this smart guy, whose name you can see on the screen here, Dalton, came up with the very first theory of atoms. So, first of all, we have to define the structure of atom. Okay, This whole chapter, this whole chapter is to go through the pursuit of defining what an atom is, what is the structure of the atom. Okay, Before that, let us read up a bit on the basic definitions. First is, what is matter? Very simple thing that you've been studying since like 4th, 5th class, I believe. What is matter? Anything that has mass, occupies space, and which can be perceived by any of our senses is called matter. Yeah? Simple thing. Si <laughs> so, yeah. This is matter. This is matter. The air around us is matter. Simple as that. Yeah. Most, yeah. You guys have studied this in the 10th class as well. That is brilliant. But since we have this in our... <laughs> Kanishk is saying, I am matter. Yes, <laughs> you are correct. So, since we have this in the NCRT of 11th and it is a part of the J syllabus, we will cover it properly. Okay. George is saying he has some audio trouble. Okay. What is the trouble, guys? Our... Wait a second. Okay. Uh, most of you don't have a problem with the audio. So, those of you who do, can you please try to refresh or increase the volume of your laptop? That will be fine. Cool. So what is matter? This is matter. What is matter made up of? This is the interesting question. Now imagine yourself in those times when atoms were not discovered. You don't even know what makes up the matter, right? You, you have your own theories about it. People used to say that fire, water, air and so on and so forth <laughs> makes up matter. Uh, so ultimately what is happening is everyone is looking for basic building blocks. Yeah. Imagine all of you being scientists in, in those times when uh, uh, guys, I request you guys to focus on this particular screen here. We will, we will chat with each other. We'll get time to chat as well. So don't worry. Okay. So uh, yes, Dheeraj, you are correct, but still please Stop using the chat box for some time. I will give you time to use the chat box as well. So, pin drop silence as they say in classes. Let's see what's happening on the board. Okay. So, at that point of time, you all are scientists. You are trying to think of. You are trying to think of what your matter is made up of. What is the building blocks? It is fire. Is it water? Is it air? Is it something else? Is it ether? So on and so forth. Yeah. So Dalton gave this theory and he said that matter is made up of tiny indivisible unit particles, which are known as atoms. Now, this is something that Dalton said. Okay. I am not saying that this is 100% correct. I am not claiming this to be the Bible, the gospel. Just stay with me. Dalton said that Matter is made up of tiny indivisible unit particles, chote chote, which are known as atoms. Okay, this is what Dalton told us. Cool, let's trust Dalton for some time. What's up, Mr. Dalton? So you can see John Dalton's photo over here. I am sure you guys recognize him already. <laughs> You've seen his picture quite a lot of times, times in the books, I guess. So, as we just read, atom is considered to be the smallest indivisible particle of matter. Okay? So that is what Dalton said. It is the smallest and indivisible particle of matter. Okay, So that is what Dalton said. Now, the explanation that this guy, Mr. John Dalton, what he gave was based on atomic masses. Again, guys, as we know, at that time, Electrons, protons, neutrons, the concept of the atomic number was not known. Yeah. So at that time, all you could do is measure some weight of something. That is why all of those properties in those times were based mainly on atomic masses. So this theory as well, 
Dalton's theory is based on atomic mass. I mean, it's not based on atomic mass, but it uses the atomic mass in a very significant manner. Okay, and this theory was given in 1805. Okay, this is even before uh, we got Dobereiner's triad. So Dobereiner's triads were something around 1830s. This one was given at given in 1805. Okay, so pretty old theory. Now we'll see what the postulates of Dalton's atomic theory are. Okay, we'll go into the details of Dalton's atomic theory. ठीक है, so since we are also pursuing science right now, it is necessary for us to understand how science is pursued. Okay, I'll just uh, no, Janardhanan, it's not necessary to remember the dates at all. <laughs> it is not history; it is chemistry. ठीक है, so just a little funda session for you guys, five minutes or perhaps less than that. What we are doing is we are studying science, right? And in science right now, what we are studying is chemistry. <laughs> Don't worry, Nathanan. We'll make everything as demystified for everyone as possible. Okay? So we are pursuing science for whatever reason it might be, and then we are studying chemistry. Now, chemistry basically tries to explain what happens in tiny tiny particles atoms protons neutrons all of the jazz related to tiny particles the reactions between them the matter around us is the study of chemistry yeah now what happens is in chemistry what people like us what scientists do is they observe okay scientists only observe when you observe something you realize that there are some realities that exist in nature and you call them facts okay now as scientists what you do and what actually pays you money and makes you famous is you give theories okay you give theories you make your own theories in your mind you see whatever is happening around you and then you make a theory and then you give it out to the world so that you can be rich and famous and earn more money and make some sense out of this world okay now always remember that these theories are man made okay these theories are all man made okay and these theories are made by scientists who had one particular type of information if they skipped some information let's take the example of mr dalton he didn't know about electrons protons and neutrons at his time so whatever theory he gave didn't have the information of electron protons and neutrons therefore it's just a theory it is not the law of nature okay when we talk about newton's laws for instance newton's laws are some theories that are given by a man to explain what was happening around him that is not the law of nature that is not how nature works so in chemistry i see a lot of people and i am sure you will agree with me i see a lot of people get frustrated with i see a lot of people get frustrated with uh, exceptions all around yeah you say that there are too many exceptions in your in in organic chemistry chemistry is more about memory and it's hard to memorize chemistry so on and so forth and i'm sure you guys also agree with that now the thing is those exceptions are not actually exceptions those are just inabilities of human scientists to explain that in one theory no one has been able to give one theory of this entire world yeah different different theories are applicable in different different scenarios einstein's theory of general relativity is applicable for heavenly bodies huge masses on the other end of the spectrum quantum mechanics is applicable for subatomic particles you can't apply quantum mechanics to heavenly bodies easily you can't apply the principles of general relativity to subatomic particles so all of it is a theory and what we pursue as scientists we what we pursue as engineers to be yeah all of that is just theory so most of the theories are going to be as such that they can't explain everything they are just theories they'll explain something you have to understand this fact okay uh, siddharth you have a very good question and siddharth is saying why are we studying the wrong theory well 
Imagine it like this. If Einstein didn't give the general theory of relativity, most of us wouldn't have been able to get anything new like that. Okay, there would have been some guy in place of Einstein. He must have, he would have given the theory if Einstein did not give the theory. But since he gave the theory and it is applicable to a lot of cases, it is necessary for us to understand that process as humans. It is necessary for us to build our brains step by step. Okay, we can't just go from nothing to everything in one go. We have to go step by step. Yeah. So when we go step by step, we also have to see the theories that were made earlier because that is definitely a more basic theory. Then we can move on to the more advanced levels. Okay, guys. So that is why it is necessary for us to understand all these theories because our brains work in a very systematic manner. If you feed it information slowly and steadily, that's how you will understand. You cannot learn. Quadratic equations and uh, <laughs> differential equations in nursery class, right? You have to learn one plus two equals to three. Chalo, but yeah, I am good to see that you guys have understood what I'm trying to say. All of chemistry is man-made theories, so if there is something wrong with the theories, please understand. It is because a human has tried to explain science. Chalo, nice. आगे बढ़ते हैं. Now these are the postulates that. Dalton gave for the atomic theory. Okay, his own atomic theory. Now let us see what Dalton told us. Number one, atom is considered as a hard, dense, and smallest indivisible particle of matter. It is hard. It is not like a pillow. It is dense. ठीक है, lots of material packed into the atom. That is what Dalton is saying, and it is a smallest indivisible particle of matter. Pretty simple. We understand this very easily. Okay. Second part is okay. I'll go full screen. I actually like seeing the clock over here, so that's why I don't go full screen. But no matter. I'll go full screen as well. Chalo. So hmm. then the second part is each element consists of a unique kind of atoms and have identical mass. This statement looks very simple. it looks like pff, why are you even telling me that it's so obvious bro it's not actually obvious imagine you have let me just open up a new page right here let's say you have this box let's say you have this box let's say you have this box okay let's say all of these boxes are 3d boxes that are kept right in front of you and you might be wondering what these boxes are made of yeah and this smart guy dalton comes and says that all three boxes are different my friend this box is made up of a this box is made up of b and this box is made up of c oh i thought all of these boxes are made up of cardboard that means according to my theory all of these boxes are made up of one single type of building block that is cardboard but then this smart guy dalton came in and said dude look carefully This box is made up of A. This box is made up of B, and this box is made up of C. If we come back to his postulate here, each element consists of a unique kind of atom. The atoms, those basic building blocks, all of those are not the same. Those atoms are different. There are different types of atoms that are possible. And Dalton told us that each element consists of a unique kind of atoms. Okay. that is really interesting and those atoms those unique kind of atoms if you see them they have identical masses so if we take an intelligent example here instead of that pathetic example of cardboards <laughs> let us look at the h2 molecule okay so we have hydrogen and hydrogen and both of these are sharing electrons amongst them we will study about the <laughs> bonding later on but point is if we look at an h2 molecule it has uh, just a minute akhil I, let me read your question what about the properties and masses of something consists of more than one yeah akhil we'll come to that don't worry we are just taking an example right now okay we are talking about elements here we're not talking about compounds okay 
so we are talking about one single single type of element okay so for compounds we will come to that as well dalton has told us things about compounds as well don't worry right now we are talking about elements so agar main hydrogen element ki baat karu if i talk about the element of hydrogen let us for an example look at the h2 molecule okay so in h2 molecule you have uh, basically two hydrogens yeah so what dalton was saying is for h2 each hydrogen atom has an atomic mass of 1 okay now dalton didn't say it has a mass of 1 but all it is, all dalton is saying is one particular type of atoms are same it's a very primitive statement to make but because you are giving a new theory it is actually necessary to tell everything so in an h2 molecule both hydrogen molecule both hydrogen atoms are the same okay amu equals to atomic mass unit okay guys so uh, there is nothing very high fi or hot shot to understand in this statement all he is saying is one element consists of a unique kind of atoms okay so let's say we are talking about hydrogen hydrogen will be hydrogen no matter what the hydrogen atom if you take 10 hydrogen atoms all 10 hydrogen atoms will be the same okay it's not like one hydrogen atom is different one hydrogen atom is different one had not like that dalton is saying again remember dalton is saying this is a theory by dalton there is no <laughs> reason behind it it's just what dalton is saying dalton says that one particular types of atom all of those are going to be same example let's say oxygen if you take 20 oxygen atoms all of those oxygen atoms will be identical that's what dalton is saying okay so if you observe each atom of h2 it has the same atomic mass therefore their properties are similar this is what dalton is saying theek okay? hai so again for those of you who couldn't understand it clearly let's come back to this pathetic example let let us say <laughs> janathanan don't worry it will be clear so let us assume theek okay, hai this box is made up of cardboard okay let's say i take three pieces of cardboard 1 2 and 3 if i have to make a theory i can say that these three pieces of cardboard are different but dalton's atomic theory says that all those pieces of cardboard will be the same if we come back all he is saying is if you have 10 atoms of hydrogen all those atoms of hydrogen every one atom of hydrogen is same is similar identical to the other okay this is all that he is saying Yup, Kanishk, you are right. They are same. Chalo, awesome. Dheeraj, Dheeraj understood it. So I assume every everyone understood it. Badiya hai. Chalo. So then let's move on to the third postulate of Dalton's atomic theory. Now, this the, this particular postulate says that atoms of different elements. We discussed about same elements in the second postulate. Now. talking about atoms of different elements <coughs> atoms of different elements have different properties cool so if i talk about hydrogen atom its mass is one atomic unit if we talk about the carbon atom its mass is 12 atomic mass units if we talk about h2 h2 becomes a gas carbon is generally formed in a found in a solid state you have you have diamond you have graphite so on and so forth yeah so hydrogen is generally found in nature in a gaseous form carbon is generally found in nature in a solid form yeah and then there is a difference between the atomic masses of carbon and hydrogen as we saw here itself theek hai so yes fullerenes and all those are also <laughs> allotropes of carbon you have nanotubes and graphene sheets and all that but anyway point we are trying to make is both of these are different ठीक है, so this is the third postulate. Atoms of one element are same. That is the second postulate. Atoms of different elements are different. <laughs> Very simple, but since it is a theory, you have to tell each and everything. चलो, 
Now, hmm, this is what we should read right now. Okay, so guys, please focus on the board right now. We'll chat later. Okay. So, अब ये postulate जो यहाँ पे आ रहा है now this is about the compounds that it forms. Okay. Now we are talking about the compounds. First, we were talking just about elements. Now, to understand it, let us consider the reaction between sodium and water. What happens? All of you know, sodium is a dancing metal. it vigorously reacts with water okay so what dalton says is that the same reaction will take place for all sodium atoms okay again something that can be deduced from the second postulate itself okay and that in that dalton is saying that the chemical properties of all elements of all atoms of same element are same okay so if you have element this is one element if you take its atoms all are same theek okay. hai so this statement also says that so it is made clear by dalton's theory that if you take one sodium atom from india and if you take one sodium atom atom from the united states of america both of them will react in the same manner with water that's what this postulate means okay so this is just an example kanishk is saying hydrogen bubbles are formed in the reaction yes you are correct but that is for a different day what we are focusing on right now is that no matter where this sodium atom comes from as long as it is a sodium atom it will have the same properties simple now moving on all the atoms of a given element have same atom having same atomic mass ye yahi postulate pad lo all the atoms of a given element having same atomic mass have identical properties cool so ye cheez isme add ho gayi that all the atoms of a given element that have same atomic mass have identical properties so ultimately what dalton has done is taken the second and third postulate and made a big postulate out of that <laughs> nothing else theek hai chalo now uh, siddharth yes we will come to isotopes later at the time of dalton isotopes were not discovered okay so yes dheeraj yes it is same as postulate 23 this is just a bigger statement for those two postulates so don't worry since you are making a theory you want to be as detailed as possible that's why this exists ashwarya is late don't worry ashwarya i will revise whatever we are doing just in a minute okay chalo so now let's see what the next postulate of dalton's atomic theory is this postulate says that compounds of different elements are formed when atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio of whole numbers okay so ultimately what this guy is trying to say is this fixed ratio of whole numbers okay guys yes uh, guys please focus on the <laughs> web page i know your chat responses are fine theek okay. hai so <clears throat> fixed ratio of whole numbers <clears throat> 